Thank you a lot. It's a great honor to be sharing this stage uh, with such an amazing amount of speakers and a lovely audience. So from me to you, a huge applause. <laughs> now, I've been working in Python for the last 14 years, and I have managed to spend 20 years without using async I.O. I was very happy during that time. Python, uh, like myself, is very horrible at doing multiple teams, uh, things at the same time. In Python, we have multiprocessing, multithreading, async. They're all horrible, but async is the least horrible of them, so I decided to talk about that. Now, uh, first, I want to introduce my assistant. Uh, he's going to be helping me today. Uh, it's his first day on the job. I usually have a unicorn, but unicorn decided to take a vacation. So be nice to assistant. He made some spelling mistakes, but he's learning. The main reason why I'm talking about async IO is that I'm a very, very stubborn person. Uh, so I don't learn new things unless I have to, or unless it bites me really, really hard. So I created a project for a client and like most machine learning projects, it was actually just making a bunch of calls to OpenAI. And those calls take a lot of seconds. So, project worked. And since it was uh, done in a hurry, it was monolithic. So I couldn't do some horizontal scaling magic. And it turns out that the client actually had users. And they weren't able to use the service. So I did what any normal person would do. I just got a bigger instance, and everything worked very nicely. Now, I was very happy with this. Client was even happier with this, but the person who's uh, happiest with them all is Jeff Bezos, because I was using AWS. And this is mostly the story of how AWS took about 30 kilos of ice cream uh, from me at the end of the month when I had to pay bills. And that's like the saddest thing that can happen to me because I'm a very great lover of ice cream. So if you see me in the hallways, don't hesitate to ask me any questions. I'm currently in the ice cream deficit phase, so offer me ice cream, I will gladly accept it. But even without that, I'm free to offer advice. Now, uh, things that are gonna, I'm gonna cover during this lecture. I know it's almost a lunch, so this is gonna be very uh, light talk. I'll be telling you what async is. I'll be telling you how we can use it with minimal efforts. So I'm aiming here for, gonna give you two or three functions that you can use. Everybody's gonna look at you and say, that person is super cool. They can use async. You're gonna get amazing performance out of it. What I will not be covering is deep tech dive into how async works. Now, in async, there are some scary stuff like coroutines, futures, uh, event loop, tasks, task groups. I will not be talking about any of that. What I'll be focusing on is how you can use async by changing few words, tweaking it, and it's gonna produce results. So I hope you're ready for that. Now, there's some housekeeping to do. I always, uh, mix up terminology in my head. We have parallelism. We have concurrency. And for me, it's the same thing. Like, I'm doing multiple things at the same time. And I learned quite recently not to mix those things up because they are not the same. And the difference is very important, especially in Python. So I'll be using an example of a topic dear to me, ice creams. Imagine and suspend your belief, for example, that you have a magical ice cream machine that produces ice cream. And unlike a regular ice cream machine, you don't have to look at it. It will just create an ice cream. So when task is not concurrent and not parallel, you go to a check register. There's a nice person there. You order an ice cream. They go to the machine, press the button, Ice cream gets created, they wait for the creation of ice cream, they come back and give you an ice cream. That's neither concurrent and not parallel. 
You might think this is inefficient, but this is like the best program because you can easily debug it and understand it. My brain works that way. Now, concurrent would be you go to the register, ask a nice person for the ice cream, they give you a receipt, they press the button on the ice cream making machine, then they go to the queue and they ask the next person what they want to do. They don't wait in front of the machine and watch it work. This is a very good thing to do because the, it reduces the waiting. However, important thing to realize here is what this person is doing, it's just avoiding the waiting. It's not doing two things at the same time. This is gonna come back later multiple times when I talk about async. Now, parallel would be the same thing as the first example, except here, we would have two queues. Now, you can complicate this. So, in parallel, it's uh, not concurrent, it's blocking, but there are two queues. Now, if both of the task registers, the person working there, were nice, and they were uh, not waiting for the machine, it would be concurrent and parallel. That is very good, but in reality, you really don't want to maintain that code. As I said, multiprocessing in Python is really horrible. I will not go into details, I hope you can trust me. We have gotten an ice cream. Now, I'm gonna go over how you can make your code faster and more efficient. And most importantly, how you can give less of your money to AWS by using smaller instances. Now, me and my assistants have created the most powerful AI engine that exists. Let's go slowly over each line of the code. It's a web app. As a, or every AI model, it needs to wait some time. In my case, it's half a second. And then it returns a message that it cannot give you an ice cream. Important lesson to all of you when you're working with LLMs. If an AI model tells you that it will give you an ice cream, it's lying, it's hallucination. So my model is 100% hallucination free, better than open AI. Uh, I want you to pay attention to this single line of code, time slip. This is uh, what you will usually see in your code. Now you might say, I'm not using time slip in my code. I want you to think of the time slip as something that's uh, input output bound. It can be a query to the internet. It can be a query to the database. You might be writing a file uh, to the file system. You might be getting uh, stuff from the file system. Important thing here, I'm underlining it again, you are waiting for something to happen. You're not using your CPU. And that's where you're uh, gonna use async. So, this here is a very rude program because it uh, starts, then it blocks everybody until it uh, does its own thing, then it continues. How many requests per second can this program handle? Throw numbers. Exactly, two requests per second. Now, I want this to be more efficient because I don't want to buy higher instances. So I have changed uh, one line of code. Instead of time slip, I called async slip. Uh, actually, I changed more lines of code, but I'll get back to that. So, async slip, one line of code of change, and do you know how much faster is this is? Come on, throw numbers. Don't be afraid. Good guess. It's one, oh, one second. It's 106 requests per second. And every time I get 50, per, uh, 50 times improvement in speed by changing just one line of code, I get very happy. So I'm gonna give applause to this little function. Now, there are a couple of things that I would like to show you here. Oh. My assistants, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, first, in order to use this amazingly powerful function, you need to do some ugly stuff to your code. 
First thing is you need to write async in front of your function. That's the easy part. Now, a synchronous function do some weird stuff. They do not give you results right away. Uh, it's, I'm not gonna go what they uh, return, but for our purposes, if you wanna get result from async function, just put a weight in front of it. I have spent hours and hours support debugging stuff because I forgot to put a weight in front of an async function. So, how to make this super easy? Just put async in front of it and call async method add a weight. Those three stuff you do, it's gonna be much faster. Now, you're not gonna use async sleep. However, there are async libraries for Postgres. There are async libraries for file system handling. There are async libraries even for OpenAI. So automatically, just by doing this stuff, your machine learning code is gonna be so much faster, and you're gonna be giving so much more money to OpenAI's API. Think of the benefits. Now, you might be thinking, uh, as it happens in my own code a lot of time, what if there is no async function? I have something super slow in my code, or I'm using this uh, nice library that doesn't have async support. <sighs> I'm not really good at async, so most of my code is not gonna be async code, but I really want to get speedy improvements without doing much of anything. So. Me and my assistants have created another function that does the time sleep blocking. That's the first one. Same as what we saw in the first example, it was super slow. That one was two requests per second. Async version is 100 requests uh, per second. And async library has this beautiful, beautiful function, which I'm gonna show you now, to thread. You throw something that's slow and blocking but, as I mentioned before, does lots of waiting. It doesn't do any CPU, uh, GPU, uh, TPU, any sorts of operation. It's waiting. You throw it, just call this function, and then pass it your function. And then, this is gonna work like a magic. I'm not gonna ask you numbers for this, because this gives you 10 requests per second. This is a five times faster, and you only had to call one function. You didn't even have to change your uh, synchronous code. And that's a very, very good thing. I love not having to change many things. Now, usually when you're making calls to external resources, you're gonna be wondering, okay, what if I want to call multiple functions? You know, you have four loops and all that stuff. Well, in async land, things tend to get very weird. So, they don't uh, like to use, uh, they are efficient ways of doing things that run counter to the human logic. Let's call it like that. So, what I have done is I have created two smaller AIs. One is much, has more, less uh, parameters, so it runs only in 0 0.4 seconds. And I wanna execute them. And since I'm super lazy, I'm using async IO to thread for both of them. They are blocking functions. And I wanna get results from both of them, and I wanna do it uh, fast. I don't care which one uh, is executed first, but once I run the wait, I wanna get the results from both of them. So, async, uh, IO, async IO gather, beautiful function. I do not fully understand it, but it does magic for me. Now, you know that uh, when I run the first uh, code that is blocking, it does two requests per second. When I run fully asynchronous code, it does 106 requests per second. When I use just async I two thread, it does 12 requests per second. Now I'm calling two uh, async I thread uh, to second functions. How fast do you think this is going to be? Throw numbers. 10? Do we have more, less? 15. 
it's actually 12.9. Uh, so you might be wondering, if I have called two functions here and one function there, why is this, uh, why do I get a 2.9 request more? Answer to that is very simple. I'm horrible person at benchmarking. I run this uh, two times, got the medium value, and use it. So my lesson to you is when you are developing something with async or anything else, do your own benchmarking code. Results are going to be different. You're not going to get 50%, 5% improvements on all that. So don't trust me as a speaker. Don't trust anybody. Do your own research. It's going to be very nice. Do's and do not with async. OK. I have given you uh, several functions. They are very useful, and they require very little use of code. And you get a bunch of cool stuff. It's very easy to impress friends. Now, what I have left out is how do I run all this stuff? It turns out you can't just uh, run Python, name of your script, and things work. It has to be more complicated in async. You have, uh, have to call async run, the name of your function, and then it works. It's just one step. It annoys me a lot, but you got to do it. Also, I'm going to underline this again. If you are doing any sort of computation, do not use async. If you are doing some sort of waiting, and it's not super long, do not use async. Uh, it's perfect for that, but it's just going to complicate your code. Make your code as human readable as possible. So do some benchmarking, test your code, and then if you see, okay, this is slowish, or in my case, I'm giving too much ice cream to Jeff Bezos, then I'm going to try using async. And you can do a lot without actually understanding what's happening under the hood. Now, I like using Fast API. So I'm going to link to Fast API documentation, which is great uh, with examples of what's happening there. Official Python documentation is amazing as well. They do like to use terminology, coroutines, future task, and all that stuff. You can figure it out. But for the most of the cases, what I have shown you is going to be super nice and easy. Now, uh, you, all of you are very test-driven development people. You want to make sure that this is running correctly. And from what I have shown you, you might be wondering, async I.O. is probably super difficult to test. It's not the case. Actually, that's uh, the good stuff about this. So there are many testing uh, libraries uh, in PyTest, and I do not judge, but PyTest is the best one, and you should use it totally. So PyTest has a PyTest async plugin. You just install it, and that's it. Like, you don't have to do any manual work. You create a function. And in my case, the async function is adding two numbers. And if you remember what I was telling you through this whole lecture, you should never create an async function that does computation. But for the purposes of this slide, me and my assistants have created that fun function. So ignore the function. Focus on the purpose of this. You just add this beautiful decorator, pytest.mark async.io. Uh, your test also needs to be async, but you don't care here because PyTest is going to do the magic uh, behind you. You await the result, assert the result. Now, you will notice that code is indented here. That's wrong, and I'll tell my sister not to do it in the future. But imagine that it is not indented. And this is how you test stuff. It's, it almost, if you squeeze your eyes, it almost looks like normal test. Now, further is, as I said, uh, Fast API is what I use uh, for my web development. It's pretty nice. Uh, official documentation is very, very nice. And that's it. I want to thank you. Also, <laughs> I love getting applause. 
connect with me on LinkedIn. Uh, you can use QR codes if you're fancy. You can use uh, URLs now. I try to be super fast so you can get to the lunch very quickly and not get hungry. If you have any questions, I'm here. Like, we have time. <laughs>